What's going on guys? My name is Jeremy, this is J-Pain Woodworking, and today I wanted to go over something that was kind of brought up to me, or I guess I should say I was in a discussion about a few days ago on social media, and that was track saw versus circular saw with a guide. Um, now this is not going to be a tool review. I'm not going to be going into the specifics of why you should choose this exact tool, the DeWalt track saw, over the DeWalt circular saw or any other brand. I want to compare these two tools generically. So the idea is, is what is the benefit of using a circular saw with a guide over or below a plunge cut track saw with the track? Uh, for me, this is a pretty clean cut case of track saw wins out. Uh, I was in a discussion the other day on some social media, and one of the big things was, I don't know how many comments I saw on this thread about why do you need to buy track saw? It's a gimmick. Why are you not just using a circular saw with a guide? Uh, why can't you cut a straight line? All this stuff. Um... I think those are a little bit arbitrary and, and kind of not very good arguments, but that's just me. So I want to go over the real differences between these two tools. Um, as you can see, especially behind me, I am a big DeWalt guy. I love my DeWalt tools, but I'm not going to be comparing these to other saws. I'm going to be comparing these types of saws to each other. Uh, to be honest, these two side by side as far as which tool is stronger and things like that, it's kind of not a fair comparison. Uh, this is the DeWalt seven and a quarter inch uh, circular saw with a 20 volt max battery. This is a 20 volt brushless saw and it works great. With that being said, this is the DeWalt brushless 60 volt six and a half inch plunge cut track saw much stronger with the 60 volt and there's a few features of this that i like a whole lot better than i like about the standard circular saw but they do both have kind of their their pros and cons so the first thing i want to go over is a little bit of information about the circular saw if you have never used a circular saw these are designed to be put onto the edge of whatever you're cutting and as you push the blade through, the guide will lift up, make your cut, and then come back down. Now, this is fine. This is really safe. You will see that there are a few things that circular saws don't really have for the most part, though. Um, especially ones that are similar to this design. For one, there's no dust collection. The dust comes out of this port and it just sprays out and makes a mess everywhere. Uh, the second part is that they're on most circular saws, there's no kickback protection. Now, some of the really high-end ones might have some form of this. I don't really know, to be honest with you. Uh, I haven't messed with them. But this, in my opinion, is a pretty high-end circular saw as far as its performance. And there's no kickback protection or anything like that. Uh, circular saws, for the most point, the seven and a quarter inch blade, that does have the ability to make a pretty deep cut. Uh, I believe that's about a two and three quarter or two and five eighths inch cut, uh, something like that. So it is able to make a pretty deep cut and it is fairly easy to adjust your depth of cut. Now to cut on a material and not go too far through it, uh, you usually just line this up onto the edge of whatever you're trying to cut. Let me grab a board here. And as you can see, you line this up onto the edge that you're wanting to cut. And once you have this lined up, you just drop down your blade until it's at the depth that it goes all the way through and lock your base down. This is a pretty standard procedure for uh, most circular saws and getting your depth of cut. Now, a lot of circular saws like this one are able to cut a bevel. Not really too worried about showing that right now. I'll go more over that in a detailed review about this actual saw later on. Um, 
the one gigantic drawback to a circular saw to me is getting a straight cut without a guide can be done and there's a lot of people that can do it but when it comes to something like that i don't like the idea because you have to follow this edge along your mark and if your hand twists by 16th of an inch you just lost a 16th of an inch one way or another either off your scrap or into the board you're needing or even worse if your hand twists for whatever reason this can cause you to bind the blade and the blade stop or it can kick back on you and be really dangerous uh and that's pretty much it circular saws have been around forever if you've done woodworking you've probably messed with one of these and they are a stable of the woodworking world as far as hand uh, power saws go i really do love this saw it cuts great has lots of power being the 20 volt max uh but again big drawbacks to me are the the no dust collection the no anti-kickback and getting a precise cut. If you're using a guide such as this Empire here, uh, you have to actually take this saw and measure from this edge of your base plate to the edge of your blade. Now, depending on which, you should always be putting your guide onto the scrap side, so then you're actually gonna have to add probably the width of the blade to this. So what that's going to do is that means this is five and one eighth inches to the opposite side of this blade. If I need to make a 10 inch cut, I need to make action, place this guide at 15 and one eighth inches from the end of the board. That's fine. It can be pretty precise. But that being said, the more you add in steps or the more you add in uh math whatever to this the more procedural steps you have the more likelihood something can go wrong the more likelihood you lose focus for a second and cut an eighth inch too short um or anything like that so that is another gigantic drawback to me of a circular saw the pros of this saw are is that it's lightweight it's lots of torque and they cut really fast and really well so if you're doing things like breaking down uh pallet wood if you make a lot of pallet wood projects these things are awesome you can go out just cut through the pieces of pallet wood and be done with it uh, but for the most part i only use this for quick initial cuts just to get something close to size and I, i've never used this saw for a finishing cut i do not like to use this saw for a finishing cut if at all possible to not do so so all in all it's a good tool it does what it's supposed to do, but there are lots of ways that this can be less efficient, less accurate, and less safe. Um, so now let's move on and take a look at the track saw so I can show you guys the fundamental difference in how the track saw works. This is the DeWalt 6.5 inch track saw. This is a plunge cut saw, which means if I were to lift this up and put a board under it, if this was what we were cutting here, this actually plunges down to make your cut. There are a few advantages to this, in my opinion. One, I don't have to start with the blade completely off the material and the back half of the saw unsupported. Um, I know that's not the biggest deal in the world, but when it comes to safety things, I, I really like the idea that I can lay this saw if this is where it, the edge of the board is. I can just start right there and plunge down and make my cut. Another nice thing is that with a track saw like this, this is your depth gauge. You do not have to set this saw onto your material and test your depth and things like that. You literally just move the depth gauge to the depth that you would like it to be. This goes to like two and a quarter inches. This is a six and a half inch saw. Uh, so Plenty of cut depth for most things you're going to need, but this is very accurate. So this allows you to say if I have a one inch piece of material, I can cut slightly below one inch and that's going to plunge all the way through the material and give a nice clean cut. The next part is these right here, these small knobs. 
these are all uh, different protections that are designed to be used with the track. And what this does is with the track on the, or the saw on the track, you're able to set up some of these stops and it stops the saw from kicking back. So this is an anti-kickback setup. You are able to push the saw forward as you need, but to come back, it catches. So that's a really nice thing to me. Um, I really like the idea that, um, you know, you, you can't necessarily have a kickback with this saw. Uh, it can happen, but the track is going to catch it and stop that. Um, luckily, I've never had any issues of having to use that or... I guess I should say having that get engaged on me. Uh, so that's a really good thing. Uh, other things that are nice about this is things like blade lock. So you can loosen this blade and now it is locked open or now it is able to be used as a plunge. That has its advantages and its disadvantages, I would guess. Uh, but also you're able to lock this down to where you can't, accidentally start the saw so it's just another safety feature uh, one nice feature also that is lacking on the circular saws is dust collection uh, you hook a shot back up here or your dust collection with a reducer whatever and it will pull the dust out of this plate through here it's almost completely dust free um, just like with anything there's always a little bit of dust but this makes it much 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 simpler now, on to, to me, what is the best thing about a uh, track saw? And that is this edge right here along your track. Unlike with a circular saw, you do not have to mark out any extra distances. This right here is actually when you get this track in, you use the track saw itself to cut this at a perfectly straight line. And you just line up the edges of this rubber piece with the edge of your mark or with your mark that you want to cut to. And when you cut this, it is a perfectly straight, perfectly accurate cut. Um, again, that to me is, is the biggest seller on this, is sheer speed and accuracy. Um, I can't explain how much faster it is to use this track saw to make two marks, lay your track down, line them up, make your cut. Not have to clamp anything down or anything like that. As you can see, the track has these anti-skid mats. And as you can see, mine's a little dirty from use. I use it all the time. But these actually stop the track from sliding. Um, with a little bit of pressure as you're pushing the saw, this does not move. So it's really nice as far as making fast cuts. All right, now that we've went over the differences between the circular saw and the track saw, I'm gonna step outside and make a quick cut with each. Now I'm gonna play these on the video in real time so you can see the difference in them. Um, it's a big difference in time used and time spent. And if you're doing any kind of work to where you need to be on the ball, you need to be getting things done, that's a big deal. Those extra couple of minutes setting each cut up wind up adding up to a lot of time in the end. Uh, that's where the track saw truly, truly shines is that it's mark, lay down your track, make your cut. It's perfectly accurate. And we're going to go out here and make a couple of cuts. And I'm going to let you see the difference in how long it takes to set up each saw and make a cut with each one.
All right, guys, so there it is. I mean, to me, the results speak for themselves as far as how quick it is to use one and how easy it is to use one tool over the other. Uh, the track saw is almost foolproof. Uh, if you can make an accurate mark on your material, you can make an accurate cut with a track saw. Um, you can do the same thing with a circular saw, but that being said, if you are a beginning woodworker, I get that this is a bit of an investment and I completely understand that 110%. That being said, it is worth the money to, to use it. If you have a smaller shop, a track saw is the way to go. Um, breaking down sheet goods with a track saw, 110% more efficient than trying to use a circular saw just to be able to get them through the door. Um, I have a narrow shop and I can't run full sheets of plywood sideways. I can't make cross cuts on a full sheet of plywood. So being able to use my track saw to make accurate finish size cuts on a cross section of a piece of plywood is an absolute lifesaver. If it wasn't for that, there's projects that I've already done in here, I wouldn't have been able to complete like I did. Um, so to me, in my opinion, it's well worth um, saving up the little bit extra and going for a nice track saw, overspending less, and going with a circular saw. Now, that being said, if you have a circular saw, you can buy these things dirt cheap. Uh, wired circular saws work just fine. If you just need something to get you by, by all means, go for it. I am just comparing the two, in my opinion, and which one I use more. I use the track saw for everything imaginable that I can use it for. Um, with that being said, guys, I really appreciate you watching the video. Let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? Do you like a track saw or a circular saw better? Which one do you use more? Do you have a track saw? Uh, what brands do you guys have? Let me know how well they work. Uh, I'd like to hear from you guys. I love getting to talk to you guys and kind of get into the conversations. Not only that, but I learn things all the time from you. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell to make sure you see all the videos coming up that I release. Um, a lot of YouTube right now is having issues with people not seeing new videos coming out, not being notified. So if you hit that notification bell, that should help a lot with that. Or bookmark the page, come back every few days, and there should be a new video up. Uh, I really appreciate guys. Also, make sure to go follow me on Instagram, at JPayne Woodworking. And I've also released some new gear, some really cool shirts, uh, things like that on the website. I'll leave a link in the description below. I'll also leave a link in the description for the DeWalt track saw, as well as the DeWalt circular saw. If you guys are interested in either one of those, go check those links out. It really helps me out, and I really appreciate the support. So I'm going to go get my hands warmed up. It's actually pretty cool out here, and I can't feel my fingertips. So after that, I'm going to get back out here and try to get some more work done. But uh, until next time, guys, I appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one.